Good morning, uh, faith community, friends and family. Uh, good to be with you in this virtual world this morning. I uh, wanted to cover a few announcements before we move into a time of worship together. Um, some of the same questions you've been having uh, continue as far as how do we stay connected, how do we keep up to speed on what's going on, and how do we care for one another. I continue to encourage you to check the website often, um, follow us on Facebook, as well as watch your inbox for emails that might be coming with any communications from us here at Faith. Um, some of the other things I want to address, uh, again, a lot of you have been asking, how do we continue our tithe or our giving to Faith Community Church? Uh, I would encourage you at this time to send your checks to the office here, 805 Ogobogi Avenue. Uh, Rita is still in the office uh, checking the mail, getting messages, handling some business as usual, even though the, the building is considered closed for the time being. Again, my assurances to you that our backpack program is operational, um, that continues to change in this situation as far as how that is handled, but we do have the designated volunteers who are best suited to be doing this work uh, in charge of that and handling that at this time. Um, P3, Products with Purpose and Prayer, which would ordinarily uh, take place for distribution on that first Saturday of the month. Uh, that will not look the same here in April. Um, again, I want to assure you that the people involved with that program are handling it to the best of their ability. We are going to be reaching out to those who have regularly utilized that program uh, in hopes of connecting with them in some way to make sure their needs are met. So uh, continue to pray for that program. Also, um, there will not be any community table events uh, until further notice if you are someone who regularly partakes in that. Uh, some of you have asked about Meals on Wheels. Um, as of right now, our voluntary action center, um, Meals on Wheels of the Iowa Great Lakes region is operational with, again, limited volunteers involved with that, but they do continue to serve those in need. Um, as far as our broadcast, um, we continue to make improvements here. We are striving to do the best we can to connect with you on a regular basis and to provide a, a worship opportunity to you, uh, whether that's uh, you're tuning in on Facebook for a live stream, or you can uh, check the website and uh, listen to the audio service. So um, again, the cable broadcast that we regularly have been a part of, that's still uh, part of our routine also. As we move into a, a time of worship, um, I'd like you to maybe center your hearts, um, prepare to hear the word, uh, it is not lost on me that uh, in this time of perhaps wandering in the wilderness, some of you are on a Lenten journey right now. And uh, Terry Jo is with us this morning to share some special music. Uh, she'll be singing about the road that Jesus took when he was bearing the cross on, his, on the road to Calvary. So um, let that open your hearts and prepare you for worship as Terry Jo sings.
to share a scripture with you from 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. You might be familiar with this one. It says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Three very simple commands. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks. I want us to be aware these aren't just uh, one-time instructions. You do it once and you're finished. Uh, it's, it's a way to live. These are disciplines to practice. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Think about the implications uh, of this scripture for a second. These commands speak to the sort of life that we were made to have with God. And today's scripture calls us to live in a bigger world, one where God is at the center. And we're given counsel for how to live in it, and that counsel is rejoice, pray, and give thanks. If we start with rejoicing always, that command is simple, uh, but perhaps even more so in this current time, it's a bit perplexing for us. We all have things in our lives that seem to draw the exact opposite response. Uh, we think of our struggles, we think of the pain we have, the sorrows that we experience. Um, maybe it's things that just didn't work out the way we wanted. Maybe it's a pandemic. We certainly have fear worldwide right now. So then we say, is this command realistic for us? Uh, rejoice always. And if it is, then how do we do that? I'll remind you that Christian joy is the fruit of the Spirit. It is not anchored in what is happening to me. It's anchored in what has happened for me. The joy is not that, hey, everything is going okay right now. The joy comes from things are going to be okay forever. Not just okay, but glorious. One great gift of this command is that it calls us to put things into perspective. We don't dismiss our pain, we don't ignore our fears, but we look at the big picture. What cause do I have for joy? Resurrection. What has the power to nullify that joy? Absolutely nothing. Our joy is not dependent on different situations, or circumstances, our joy is about what Christ has done. That means this command, rejoice always. It's not only realistic, it's logical. If my hope rests in knowing Christ has defeated death and has reconciled me to my Creator, I always have cause for joy. I am not destitute, I am not alone. I can look at my greatest fear or my deepest pain in the light of the cross I can acknowledge the brokenness in the world, the brokenness in me, but I know that I've already been saved, and for that, I will rejoice. Now we talk about praying without ceasing. It sounds like a, a beautiful command, pray without ceasing. It's the same as me saying, pray and don't stop. This command describes an action posture, if you will, to always be leaning into the reality of God in our lives, the nearness of Him. Prayer, of course, uh, as you've often heard me say, is just talking to God, being in conversation. Uh, most of those formal prayers that we see in Scripture have certain elements uh, and address when we say uh, our Father, or uh, when we say Lord, uh, eternal God, gracious God, however we address our Lord and Savior. Uh, we usually describe a situation that we're praying about. We perhaps confess a sin or a need. We offer requests, please, but always praise. And not all prayers are, are formal. Um, sometimes those prayers are quick, in the moment responses. Things like, help me Lord, that's a prayer. Things like, thank you Jesus, that's a prayer. Others are put down in writing. If you have a time uh, set aside just for prayer and the study of Scripture, there are so many ways that we can pray. To say pray without ceasing, it's just a way of saying 
Please have an ongoing conversation with God. Keep building that relationship. Martin Lloyd-Jones said, prayer in many ways is the supreme expression of our faith in God. We pray to know him. And then we come to this part about giving thanks in all circumstances. Gratitude is a mark of the Christian life. Joyful thanksgiving for grace. And friends, we have so much to be thankful for. And we have one to be thankful to. What are we to do with that gratitude? We are to express it. By focusing on joy, praying regularly, and giving thanks, we tune our minds to fix on him and our hearts to rest in him. The coronavirus, COVID-19, has already turned everything upside down and changed life as you know it. The sobering reality is it will do so even more in the coming days and weeks. It's an uncertain, uh, perhaps scary time, but you still get to choose how you're going to respond. You can choose to respond to COVID-19 with fear or cynicism or despair, or you can choose to give thanks for all the blessings that you see in its midst. Choose to give thanks. Don't misunderstand me, be safe. Please take the precautions recommended to us. Don't ignore the situation, but choose to look for things to be thankful for. Choose to give thanks. And maybe you're gonna tell me that I'm having a little trouble right now finding things to be thankful for. Well, there's a, a quote circulating right now on social media, and it's a quote from Mr. Rogers of uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. He said, when I was a boy, I would see scary things on the news. My mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people helping. Give thanks for all those on what we call the front lines, medical staff, emergency personnel who are treating this illness often at great risk to themselves. Give thanks for people who are continuing to provide essential services so that you have food, you have electricity, and other basics. Give thanks for good Samaritans who are helping those who are perhaps forgotten or on the margins. Give thanks for those leaders who are calmly providing guidance and important information to the public about the reality of this pandemic. Give thanks for the prayer warriors who are never ceasing for our members and friends who honor safety protocols by self-isolation and social distancing, yet they stay connected to one another by making phone calls or sending cards or emails or text messages. And most importantly, give thanks that God is still God, Jesus is still Lord, and the Holy Spirit is still at work. This is the will of God for you, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances. Let's pray. Lord, we struggle sometimes in knowing your will for us um, and understanding things that are happening around us. But God, will you help us to know your joy, the peace and assurance that you offer us. Uh, allow it to calm any anxieties or, or fears that we may have. Uh, take that a step further, Lord, and just take those anxieties and fears from us. Spur us on through the power of your Holy Spirit uh, to pray and to not stop praying. We do lift up those who are in need, Lord, those looking for your healing, whatever type of brokenness, they are wanting to be healed. And Lord, we, we pray that they might find that healing in Christ Jesus. Thank you for the many ways that we are blessed. Help us to see it and to be a blessing to others. Thank you for being God. And hear us, Lord, as we pray as Jesus first taught his disciples. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen.